In Texas, the Rio Grande Valley. A vast, fertile floodplain running along the northern bank of the Rio Grande River. This remote, largely unclaimed land is well known for attracting a huge variety of migrating birds. And within this same valley, there is a legend about a winged creature of monstrous proportions. A bizarre and terrifying amalgamation of bat and Bigfoot. Rumors about the flying creature came to life in the 1970s with an outbreak of sightings in communities in the Rio Grande Valley. The buzz all started in the first couple of months of 1976. Things came to a head when a man in Raymondville, out in his front yard, was attacked by a creature that he claimed had simian and bat-like features and leathery wings. As the story goes, on January 14, 1976, Armando Grimaldo stepped outside to enjoy the quiet evening. He heard a papery flapping noise above him and felt a strange draft. By the time he looked up, it was too late. Grabbed by the monster, Grimaldo finally managed to break free. He reported the attack to the police. And his story was corroborated by his neighbors because the back of his jacket and his shirt had been shredded by what appeared to be talons. After that attack, the story went wild. All of the newspapers were reporting it. Other reports began to, to pour in. People were making their children stay indoors. They were afraid that the, the creature might attack them. There was a general panic throughout the entire Rio Grande Valley at, at that point. In the 1970s, witnesses claim a bizarre flying Frankenbeast, Bat Squatch, unleashed terrifying airstrikes from the skies of South Texas. David Bowles grew up in the Rio Grande Valley. He has collected monster stories throughout the region. One of the most nail-biting encounters was the one that Manuel Perales and his 12-year-old son Danny had in the month of January of that year. It was an uncommonly cold January morning. Hey, Daddy, help me out when father and son arrived in their radial pickup at a friend's ranch in northern Hidalgo County. It was early in the morning. Let's go. Right, that's it. When father and son pulled their rifles out, their cooler full of sandwiches, and climbed up into the deer stand and began the long wait. After a few hours, a deer did arrive. Just the sort that his father wanted to bag that day. Manuel nudged his son, indicating that he should go ahead and take the shot. But as Danny sighted and, and looked into the eyes of the deer, he realized he couldn't do it. He turned to his father and simply shook his head. His father was clearly upset and took aim to take the shot himself. However, his rifle jammed, and at that very moment, the deer bolted. His father turned to, to Danny and asked him, why couldn't you take the shot? Danny, before he could reply, was startled to see his father suddenly pulled to his feet. Ah! saw his father gripped by the talons of an enormous avian humanoid that flapped its wings and tried to lift the man out of the deer stand. And Danny, without thinking, stood, lifted his rifle to his shoulder, aimed for the beast's eye, and took the shot. 
It howled in pain, released his father, fell with a thud, and then it wheeled away through the sky, screeching in pain. Manuel Perales realized that he was lucky to make it out alive. He suffered only cracked ribs, which healed with time. Manuel never forgot the actions of his son, the way the boy had saved his life. After two frightening months in South Texas, the flying fiend abruptly disappeared. Though for anyone that crossed its path, the memory of the encounter burns bright. That 15 or 20 seconds that we saw that creature is ingrained forever in my memories. I, today, if I close my eyes, I can see that thing. I do remember those eyes, and that will take me to my grave, those glowing red eyes. Yes. 